You're bringing up all the pollen! This guy's driving me insane. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Marta. I'm finally here with Marta May, my way, macrame. And I'm not doing it my way. I'm doing it the way that it's supposed to be done. Disclaimer, I am not a macrame professional. I always used to think that macrame was like this mysterious thing that only like certain people in the macrame club could do. Well, I'm in the club now. <laughs> I'm actually very impressed. I only learned how to macrame maybe about a week ago. I happen to love racame. Racame. I love anything that's made out of like rope materials. I love bringing all that natural stuff inside my home. Except for the pollen. Can't deal with this guy. Okay, let's get to it. So one of the biggest questions I had was, how much rope do I need? If you know me, you know I hate math. But unfortunately, we're going to have to do a little bit of math to get a basic knowledge of how much rope we're going to need. When you're starting to macrame, there's tons of trial and error. But luckily, there are some formulas that can help us. Like this one, which tells us we're going to need rope four to six times our intended project's length. What the heck? Which one do you choose, four or six? Well, it depends on whether you have tighter knots in your project, many knots, fringe, detail, all of that matters. The more knots you have, the more rope you're going to need. So if your design is very detailed, you might want to lean towards the higher number. Now let's face it, rope is expensive. I call it rope, you can call it cord, whatever you like, but it's expensive. But it's better to have more than you need as opposed to running out midway through your project, and you can always use leftovers for scraps. So here's my example. I wanted my project length to be 3 feet, or 36 inches, let's work with inches. My project isn't very detailed, and I was being cheap, so I went conservatively and multiplied by 4, which equals 144 inches, and that's how long my rope needs to be. After all that math, thank you Jesus, I found a very easy formula for width. I will leave the young lady's channel down below, but basically you just multiply your project width by 2. How easy is that? Now let me explain her reasoning. And keeping in mind that I'm using 4 millimeter rope, which is not too thick, not too thin, and it's really a very popular sized rope, especially for a beginner. So two strands of cord folded in half, which is what we do when we macrame, almost makes an inch. But now let's look at it when we use a very popular knot, which is a square knot. You can see it's about an inch in width. I want my macrame project to be 10 inches in width, so I multiply the 10 by 2, and that gives me 20 cords. I need 20 cords at 144 inches each. Now, I'm sure the macrame club is going to come after me, but this worked for me, okay? Four minutes in, and I haven't even started macrameing yet. This video might be as boring as the day is long to some, but I wanted to put together a video that would have helped me when I was starting. It's long, believe me, I know, but I'm hoping that taking the extra time to show you what I've learned will help someone. So it is what it is. Cutting your cord could be a real drag, especially if you have a very large project. Easiest way for me was to cut my first piece and use it as a template to cut the rest pulling the rope directly from the coil. If you saw my last video, you know that you don't have to use a dowel. You can use a hanger, a tree branch, anything really to hang your macrame project from. In this case, I'm going to be using a piece of rope and I'll show you why later on in the video. So we're going to start off with the lark's head knot. And this is simply a basic mounting technique used to attach your rope to an object. It's a very simple knot and all you do is fold your rope in half and then place the loop that it automatically makes up on top over your object. In this case, it's the rope. Bringing that loop down behind your rope or dowel, you're going to take your two cords and pull them through that loop and then pull down. And when you tighten it up, that is what's called a lark's head knot. Now, this looked a little sloppy because Max, my cat, was playing around with the rope. But no worries, I'll show you a few times. Now, 
now that I have all 20 of my cords ready to go, we're going to move on to the square knot. We're going to be working in sections of four cords at a time, and I'm just moving the other cords to the side so you can get a better view. Now a good way to think of this is that the two cords in the middle have separation anxiety and do not want to be away from each other. So those cords will always stay together. You can begin with the left outer cord or the right outer cord, it really doesn't matter. I like to start with the left. And I'll be making what most people like to call a number four. It looks like a nose to me, but let's just call it a number four. And now I'm going to take the cord on the outer right and place it over the tail end of that four. Slide it under the anxiety stricken twins. Feed it through the loop and pull both cords to tighten up. Now you can go all the way up in the next frame, I will show you that you can tighten it all the way up to the very top, or you can leave it loose and have these little tiny loops that you see there that I'm leaving up on top. It's totally up to you and the design that you're making. Now we're gonna go over to the other side and make our backwards four. Place the left cord over the tail end of the four slide the rope underneath the two cords in the middle, feed it through the loop, and then we're going to pull our cords to complete our square knot. And that's it. That's how you make a square knot. And I showed you in my previous video how to make a square knot. It's pretty easy. Like with anything else, repetition is key. And the more you do it, the faster and better you will get. Now I'm just gonna continue grabbing four cords at a time, making my square knots all along the top edge of my project. I'm gonna start off my second row a little differently. And the reason is I want to make a square knot in between those two square knots. So keeping in mind that we only use four cords when making a square knot, we're going to pull two of the cords from each of those square knots to the side, like I did there. Two from the left and two from the right, ending up with four cords in the middle. And now we can go ahead and make our square knot. How many times did I just say square knot? I don't know, about 32 times. Now for the next one, we're just gonna take the two leftover cords from that knot and then two from the next knot. And I'm gonna repeat these steps until I have four rows of alternating square knots. For my fifth row, I'm going to be pulling aside four cords instead of two in order to make a row of square knots a little further down this pattern. You've already seen me do quite a few square knots, so I'm just going to speed it up as to not bore you. Now we're going to make berry knots. To make a berry knot, you have to make a few square knots. Now I just made three. You can make more depending on how big you want the berry. I mean, the bigger the berry, the sweeter the juice. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna create those square knots consecutively, one right after the other. Again, I made three, but you can make more. So once you've made your square knots, you're going to take the two middle cords and you're going to weave them through the hole at the very top of those square knots. Pull them all the way through. And using those same four cords, you're going to create one square knot. And that's the way you lock your berry knot. Oh,
I am in love with the way that this came out. It's a very simple design and that was my intention. I didn't want to get crazy. I don't know how to do crazy anyway. I just used the leftover cords on the sides to mount this to an embroidery hoop. I made another one using square knots and also using some Dollar Tree twine just to give it a little pop of something. And I attached it to a Target dollar spot basket. They were both basically made the same way, minus the berry knots, and you see, you can make something beautiful by just using square knots. To show you how to make a couple of other knots, I'm going to take this idea. It wasn't my idea. I've seen many people do it on YouTube. One in particular is Megan Bell, and I will leave her channel linked down below. But basically, I'm going to be making a macrame bottle cover. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on how I set this up. I'll let you go watch her video so that you can see how it's properly done. But basically, we're going to use the same principle. We'll be using a piece of a rope instead of like a dowel or something to hang our lark's head knots from and to create our macrame. Taking two pieces of rope about, I'd say, three times the length of your bottle, just to make sure you have enough. You're going to wrap it around your bottle where you want this to end. Better said, where you want it to lay. Create a square knot to secure it to your bottle. I use tape just to make sure that it doesn't move around while I'm doing it. Now for this size bottle, I attached about, I want to say 35 Lark's Head Knots. And I used, I think I had like 40 strands of cord. Because you do have to include the four cords from the square knot that you made at the beginning. If that makes any kind of sense. Go watch her video. She does a better job at explaining it. But once I have all of my Lark's Head Knots attached I'm going to go on to create my pattern and I'm going to be making three square knots. I just love those square knots. And one of them is going to go right in the middle and we're using four cords for that. And then I'm going to make square knots on either side of that. So you see we have four cords in the middle and I'm just pulling two cords from, you know, the next door neighbor. And I'm going to create a square knot yet again. And you'll see what I'm doing here. I'm just creating a square knot basically next to that one. And I'm going to be making them, they kind of look diagonal, like they're going diagonally, both on the left and the right. I probably am making no kind of sense, but you'll understand when you see it. Better than me explaining it, of course. So the second to last knot I want to show you how to make is this double half hitch knot or a diagonal clove hitch knot. You can call it whatever you want, but guess what? This was the hardest one for me to learn. And it will probably be every bit as difficult for me to explain, but I'm going to take a stab at it. Here goes nothing. So with the double half hitch knot, you have to decide which strand of cord or rope you want to use so that the rest of the cords can go around. It's usually the one on the left or the one on the right, usually the outer cord. Now we're gonna make ours diagonally, but you can do this double half hitch knot straight across if you want to, but we're gonna do it diagonally. And basically, that cord that I just grabbed, okay, that's like Casanova. Everybody wants to be around him. <laughs> that's the best way that I can explain it. All the girls, the rest of the ropes, want to go around him because he's just lazy and he doesn't want to move. We're going to be making diagonal clove hitch knots down the left and the right. So starting with the rope at the far left, we're going to grab the second rope and create sort of like, I guess you would call it a U, 
You see that U there? And then we're going to pull the cord through and pull it up. I'll show you once again because to complete the diagonal clove hitch you have to do it twice and it really depends on your dexterity and how you hold your hands you'll get the gist of it and you'll figure out what's more comfortable for you but again the rope that's next to Casanova is going to go underneath him okay and then we're going to bring it over create that loop and bring it right through the loop. Tighten it up and you've created your first double half hitch knot. Now I'm going to do it again. The next one, the next young lady, <laughs> is wants her turn. <laughs> and so we're going to bring it underneath Casanova, bring it over, pull it through, and then bring it up, tighten it. I'm gonna do it a couple of times so that you can get the gist of it. Hopefully you'll understand what I am trying to explain. It's pretty difficult. It really took me a long time to get this, especially my hand placement. It was weird. But you're gonna to continue to do this, taking the next cord, bringing it over, I don't know why I throw it that way. It's just so that you can get a better idea of how it goes. And then you're going to pull it through the loop and create your knot and then make the second knot doing the same thing. And now we're going to go ahead and do the other side, which was equally as difficult. I don't know why. I'm, I'm right-handed, so I really don't know why this... <laughs> was such a problem but it was but now the other side is basically the same thing you're going to use the right outer cord as your Casanova and everything else is going to go underneath him and over and you'll be able to see what I'm doing And now we're going to join them. And to join them, you can use the left cord or the right. I'm going to use the right one just because, I don't know, I just wanted to. <laughs> and so you're going to take the cord on the left and go right over the cord on the right, just like we were doing before. It's really the same technique. Casanova is still not moving, okay? He's still staying still and the other rope the one on the left is the one that's going over and through and then you're going to pull up and tighten and there you go now that's my pattern and I'm going to be doing this all the way around the bottle now the last knot that I'm going to show you how to make is a spiral knot and this is extremely easy. And the reason is because I know you guys already know how to make a square knot. We've made 72,000 of them in this video alone. All you have to do is just continue to make that four on the same side. 
If you're starting on the left, you just continue to make fours on the left all the way down. And if you start on the right, then you make fours on the right. Hopefully that makes sense. Now I'm not tightening this up. You're really supposed to make it nice and tight so that you can see the spiral. And I end up doing that later. I just wasn't sure if I wanted spiral knots, but I did want to show you how to make one. Another thing I wanted to point out when making spiral knots is that you don't have to like chase this thing around if that makes any kind of sense. I learned that through trial and error. You see how that turns? You can just turn it around and start using the rope that's facing you. I don't know if that made any kind of sense, but you know, you don't you just don't have to chase this thing around. We're not even saying. To make some of that pretty loose fluffy fringe all you have to do is just separate the cord with your fingers it's pretty easy to do time consuming but easy and then I'm gonna comb it out and uh, have you taken a look at my hair I don't use a comb I don't own one but I did buy this pet brush after seeing XO McKenna brush out her macrame cords with it and it really works very very nicely and in case you're wondering no I don't use it on Max he will not allow it and once it's all brushed out I just take a pair of scissors try and measure everything so that they're all the same size and just give it a haircut Final thoughts. I know I say this a lot, but it's because I really mean it. My subscribers, my big old Cuban family here on YouTube, you are all so uplifting. You're respectful, accepting, supportive. You know, when you start a YouTube channel, you just don't know how you're going to be received. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Definitely one of the positives of my YouTube experience. When I started YouTube, I thought there were going to be so many kumbaya moments with my fellow YouTubers. I mean, you know, we're all women, there are some men, but we're all in this together. A big old DIY family, that's what I thought, and that's how I felt, and still feel. But I quickly realized this is a business to some, to most, and there is competition. Add those two together, and it's a recipe which can create the mean girls, the copycats, the jealous ones, a godforsaken jambalaya, as if there wasn't enough success to go around in the world. Now I'm sure I'm not gonna get any brownie points for this one, and I may lose some friends and subscribers, but the truth is the truth. We rise by lifting others. Cliche, but oh so true. What if instead of exclusion, we focused on Inclusion. No matter how many subscribers somebody has, if they're talented, they're talented. Take Exo McKenna, for example. Simply amazing. Her content is varied, it's fresh and new, and she's got a killer personality. A gazillion more subscribers than I have, but I'd be doing her a disservice if I didn't share the things that I've learned from her channel, but also a disservice to you, my subscriber who would probably enjoy her channel. Subscribe and you'll see what I mean. Being inspired by one another is amazing, but we have to give credit where credit is due. I think it's human nature to be a little envious of each other, especially when we're all doing similar things. However, we can minimize it by being supportive of each other, by coming together, sharing our strengths, wisdom, and talents with one another, we don't only learn from each other, but we promote solidarity. There's room at that table for all of us. If I had to pick one YouTuber right now who embodies everything that I just said, it would be Nicole from The Weeks Nest. I call her Miss Congeniality. 
She is the sweetest and most genuine person you would ever want to meet. She truly supports all of her fellow YouTubers. A huge thumbs up to you, Nicole, my friend. Your DIYs are original and so are you. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're just starting to macrame or even if you just needed a refresher, I hope this helped you in some way. If I can do it, you can do it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one, my friends.